I'll make a say. What up? Me first. <laughs> Welcome to lesson 3-6, fitting data to a line. This is where the math starts to get fun. We're going to gather some data, and then we're going to find an equation for this data, and then we're going to use the equation to make predictions. So this is literally where you started to have enough skills in algebra to use your algebra to solve problems. All right, I've gathered some data about some people that I know. And I've got their heights and their weights. And so now we're going to graph this data. All right, here we see some real world data. The teenager height versus their weight. I believe that the weight is dependent upon the height, the taller the person, the uh, more they're going to weigh in general, okay, but you're dealing with human populations. So you can see that the data does not fall on a perfect line because you have skinny people, you got chubby people, you have short people, you, have, you know, you have all different body sizes. But in general, there is an increase relationship. The higher the, the, the taller they are, it seems to be the more they weigh. Now, this happens all the time in life when you gather data and there are humans involved. All right, so you're looking for trends. Now, what we're going to do is try and fit a line to these data points here. I recommend taking a piece of spaghetti, raw spaghetti, that has not been cooked, because it's easy to see on both sides of the line. Now we can see that there's an upward trend to this data. So what we want to do is try and fit a line to the data that describes the pattern here. Okay. Now, some people think you have to go through at least two points on the data set, and I don't happen to believe that. I think you just need to find two spots or a general location here of your line so that you have roughly the same amount below as above and, and you have the points kind of the same distance away from the line. Okay? You know, I mean, technically we could do that and have the same number up to the left and to the right, but that's not describing the trend here. The trend is like this. So, um, actually that doesn't look too bad right there. All right, once you have your spaghetti string where you want it, go ahead and take your pencil and mark two spots on your spaghetti string and then remove the string. Take your ruler and connect those two spots. Okay, so this is what I think my line of best fit is going to be. All right, now let's go in and find the coordinates of these two points that we marked. All right, as you can see, this point right here is over 66 on the height axis, and it's up 130 on the weight axis, so its coordinate would be its coordinates would be 66 comma 130. All right, now let's do this one. This one, let's see, that's over, okay. That's going to be over 1, 2, 3, 63. And it's going to be up. Now let's take a look here. Mm, that's 115. I'm going to say about 114. 114. All right. So we've got two points on our line of best fit. And now it's time to find the equation for the line of best fit. Well, we learned in, la in our last lesson that as long as we can find two data points on a line, we can find the line. All we have to use is um, the point slope form. Y minus y sub 1 is equal to the slope times the quantity x minus x sub 1. So it looks like we're going to have to find the slope for our two points. All right, let's go back here. Okay, this one was farther to the right, the 66 comma 130. Okay. So this would be my x sub 2, y sub 2, because it's farther to the right. And the 63 comma 114 would be my x sub 1, y sub 1. 
All right, so doing our amount of rise, we take uh, y sub 2 minus y sub 1, and our amount of run would be from 66 uh, back down to 63 here. 66 minus 63 for the x sub 2 minus x sub 1, which means our slope is 16 over 3. It's a positive slope, which we knew by looking at the graph. And uh, let's see, that's not going to reduce beautifully. It'll go to 5 and 1 third, which is 5.3 repeating. All right, so to get our equation, all we have to do is take this slope and plug it up into the point slope form. And we'll use one of these points. I think I'll use this one right here. Okay, so it's going to be y minus y sub 1, which is 114. Um, and that's equal to the slope, which is 5.3 repeating, times the quantity x minus 63. All right, now, even though this is a perfectly good equation, let's go ahead and clean it up just a little bit and get it into slope-intercept form. All righty, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 5.3 repeating, and I'm going to get y minus 114 is equal to 5.3 repeating times x minus, if I take this times this, I'm going to get 336. Now I'll just simply add 114 to both sides, and I will get y equals 5.3 repeating x C minus 222. All right. So there we see the equation in slope-intercept form, and here it was in point-slope form. I make a say. Oh.